Pecolis, who's a senior fellow at the Space Sciences Laboratory at the University of California, Berkeley, and the director of Multiverse, the Space Sciences Laboratory Education Group. Dr. Petacolis reserved her BA in mathematics and physics at the University of Oregon Honors College and her PhD in physics studying the aurora at the University of Alaska, Alaska Fairbanks. And uh, from what I understand, she has family in Oregon still and knows exactly where she's going to be for the eclipse. So uh, won't have to go too far from her old stomping grounds. She's led several NSF and NASA funded national education programs that provided professional development on physics, Earth and space science, as well as cross-cultural collaborations to educators who primarily teach in out-of-school settings. Dr. Petacolis is currently leading the Eclipse Mega Movie Project, a crowdsourcing effort to collect and share images across the path of totality during the 2017 total eclipse of the sun. She also provides science consulting services to several NASA-funded education and communication initiatives and her passion for equity and inclusion in all aspects of society and for the knowledge gained through scientific practices influences all the work that she's involved in. So please welcome Dr. Laura Petacolis. Hello, everyone. It's so fun to see um, you putting in where you're from on the chat window. That's, that's awesome. And, um, Thank you for those of you who are on the East Coast. It's nine o'clock there, I know, which is uh, close to my bedtime. So I appreciate you coming on today. So I'm going to um, share my screen. I have a PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to kind of talk through. Um, and hopefully this will work well for you all. All right, so here's, let's see. All right. So here we go, and I know uh, Brian said he would um, monitor the chat window, so, and I, also the question and answer for me. So he'll be interrupting me, and Vivian as well, um, if you have pressing questions. Otherwise, we'll have questions also at the end. And I'm gonna try to keep track of time so we can ensure we um, get to the book uh, raffle at the end <laughs> before you all have to leave. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about a, a project called the Eclipse Mega Movie, which we started working on about four years ago, five years ago, in anticipation for the 2017 Eclipse Across America. And um, this project is a crowdsourced project um, for science and for education and also for outreach. So I'm going to start just uh, briefly with a reflection and have you all think about uh, some questions here, and, and you can think about them and reflect on them in any way that makes sense for you. So you could put them in the chat box, your answers in the chat box. Um, if you, I saw some of you have people with you watching this, so you could talk to um, the person next to you. You could write it down on a piece of paper, or you could just think about it in your own mind. So here are the questions I'd like you to reflect on a little bit. Uh, first, just have you seen a solar eclipse before? And if so, did you see a partial, annular, or total solar eclipse? And if you've seen multiple ones, um, which ones of those have you seen? Uh, I'd also like for you to reflect on what was it like as an experience to be part of that solar eclipse if you, were, if you did experience that. Um, did you capture images or videos while you were uh, participating or experiencing that? And also, did you contribute to scientific understandings of the sun? I know many of you, um, as amateurs, often do contribute to our scientific understanding of all sorts of astronomical bodies. Um, so it could be that you, you've actually done some of that work. So um, take some time to think about those things. And then, uh, then there are a couple other questions. Um, where will you be on August 21st, 2017? If you know already, I think many of you already know. Uh, what do you already know about the total solar eclipse in August? What do you already know about this Eclipse Mega Movie project that I'm going to tell you about? And what do you hope to learn about the Eclipse Mega Movie project? So that will help um, me at the end to kind of fill in in anything that I might not have covered. So, you know, again, you could share this with someone that you're next to. I see the chat boxes going. I see 14 things added there. I, I don't see what they say right now, but um, all right. And then just go ahead and share out with each other, with people in your room or again in chats, any of your answers. 
And actually, I'm going to just do a quick check here on the chat. Uh, okay, I see some of you will be in Tennessee. Uh, you some many nine total solar eclipses. My goodness, uh, several partials. Um, some have never seen a total solar eclipse. Be in Casper, Wyoming, Kansas. Um, uh, seen many partials, but no totals. Okay, fantastic. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Some of you in the chat. That helps. So we really have kind of a, a broad group. All right, so I'm going to provide, just for those of you who like summary statements, um, <laughs> I am going to uh, just provide a short summary. So if you came, you wanted to know about the mega movie, and now you got to go, this is your, your chance. But I hope you stay for the drawing. <laughs> OK, so essentially, um, this project is really for those of you who will be under the path of totality. Uh, for, so if you're going to be able to watch the, the total solar eclipse. Uh, it's a first of its kind citizen science project gathering scientifically valuable data from the total solar eclipse. And we hope that you'll join us. Uh, I'm speaking today, but really this has been and continues to be a giant uh, team. It, the team is growing and growing. And uh, last year, December, meaning a year and a month ago. Um, this was the team that convened. We now, uh, this is when Google, our Google team um, had signed on to be part of the project and help us collect the images and, and support the website development. So um, it, it, it's a large team. We'll I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But I just want you to know that uh, it's not just me doing this project. I, there's no way I could do this on my own. <laughs> So I think many of you know already, we're gonna have this total solar eclipse, um, August 21st, 2017. It passes across the entire uh, US, uh, the totality does, and even partial. You'll see, I love this, this graphic from the greatamericaneclipse.com. If you haven't been there already to that website, it's a great website, and he's been doing these really nice um, graphs like this. So you can grab them and share them with your audiences too. I know many of you do uh, outreach events with the public. So you can see already that um, even a huge swath of the country will see up to 90% of the sun covered. So this is really a spectacular event for our country. And then we have this amazing path uh, the, of the total solar eclipse traversing across the country from Oregon all the way to South Carolina. And you can see that the, um, the time of totality varies from two minutes to uh, two minutes and, and 40 seconds. And then also um, it'll take about an hour and 40 minutes for that path for the shadow of the moon to, um, to move across the United States. Our Eclipse Mega Movie Project is going to kind of capitalize on um, this. And from the path of totality, we will gather images and videos of the 2017 total solar eclipse from over a thousand volunteer photographers and amateur astronomers. And we really hope that you all will um, sign up to be some of our volunteers. Um, we know that you already are uh, well versed in, in astronomical photography and image taking and working with the public and so we're hoping this is exciting to you. Um, we'll be gathering images and videos from members of the general public as well using an app that we're working on developing um, and then we're going to stitch these media assets together mostly from the volunteers to create an expanded continuous view of the total solar eclipse across the U.S. which we're calling the movie. So when we say the mega movie project this is this kind of hour and 40 minute movie across the United States we will make from images of the corona during totality. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, we will then make available to the images, to the uh, public, these images that we've collected so they can, anyone can take them and make art out of them or, or, or do science with them. And for the scientific community, uh, we are, planning to understand more about our dynamic sun through analyses of these images. Okay, so this next section is to kind of explore. Um, I'm going to explore a little bit about the history of, how, of the sun's atmosphere. Um, and also, I know a lot of you uh, know some of this content quite well. And I, I you know, if, um, if it makes sense for you and you already kind of are following along and you want to explore on your own, go ahead and do that too. Um, Zoom, you can uh, minimize the screen or, or make it a, a smaller box and you can go online and um, kind of do some of your own research. 
but um, I'll take you, or you can just watch with me. So for those of you who have not been at a total eclipse, um, I was at a, the total eclipse in 1979 in Oregon. I grew up in Eugene, Oregon, and my dad was a professor, chem chemistry professor. So he took uh, my sister and I and mom out to Oregon and I got to see a total eclipse. But it was, there was a lot of cloud cover and I didn't really get a great um, sense of the totality. But this is an image taken um, to kind of give you a sense of what it might look like, although I've been told uh, that it doesn't actually look like this. This is a picture. It's spectacularly beautiful. And you can, the, our eyes have such a good dynamic range that much better than a CCD camera or even a um, photographic camera that uh, it's just, it'll blow you away. So I'm from the folks who kind of, those of you who've seen nine total eclipses, I think you can probably speak to that much better than I can. Um, the sky darkens, uh, stars and planets become visible, the sun's corona is visible, and it's safe to look at it with the naked eye when it's at totality, not before or after, but when it's at this, when it's like this. Um, there's a kind of the sunset effect seen all, all around the horizon, which is also kind of um, different. <laughs> And uh, during the total eclipse of the sun, you, uh, the photosphere is blocked. And so that's why you can see this atmosphere of the sun, which is always there, but it's so dim and we can't see it normally. Um, and so we, we call that the corona because it looks like a corona means crown. Uh, and it looks kind of like a crown that a king might have worn 100, you know, several hundred years ago. So you can see these features, these stream, they're called streamers um, in the corona. The sun, so this is a very static image, um, but we know that the sun is very dynamic. And in um, 1859, uh, Carrington, Richard Carrington, the scientist in England, was um, drawing pictures of these spots on the sun that are dark and um, kind of change and morph over time. And he was drawing these pictures of these sunspots. Um, so this is a, a, the actual drawing that he made of these sunspots right before then this bright light came from these uh, sunspots um, and just lasted, I forget how long it lasted, but long enough for him to see it, but not, not it was um, fairly short. And it was like a flare, like a flare up of light. Um, and that's where that name comes from, flare, a solar flare. And so he, uh, he, he was surprised to see the, how fast something could change on the sun um, and bright, in that bright of light. So, so that's one piece of the dynamic sun is the, these flares, these flares flaring up of the um, light coming off the sun. And then there's also changes out in the corona that happen a little, uh, a little small, um, not in the second to minute time scale, but more in the minute to hour time scale out in the corona. And I'll show some movies of this from NASA a little bit later. But um, I also wanted to, I think this is a really interesting graphic um, by Eddie in 1974 uh, of all these different images of the of the of a total solar eclipse that occurred in 1860 across Europe and you can see that um, scientists went out and they drew what they saw during these total eclipses and it was kind of the I, I like to think of it as the early effort at crowdsourcing coronal structural changes during a total eclipse so this is essentially what we're going to be trying to do with the mega movie uh, with all of your support and others but not just with drawings I think drawings may end up coming in handy but we really want to get some good um, images from high uh, from really good cameras as well but this was done in 1860 and you can see solar features were clearly different clearly different in different locations and the different locations um, were different times as well and so uh, of totality so you can see that most likely the Sun not only was there an observer um, bias to to the changes in the Sun but there there's likely to have also been changes that occurred in the sun over time that were being documented by these um, by these scientists and maybe this is even a a, um, a coronal mass ejection some solar storm coming off the sun that you can see down here um, in 1889 Frank. Uh, Bigelow suggested that magnetic fields could be really important in structuring these features. So the, people have been 
for for thousands and thousands of years, people have um, documented this, this. This it's likely in petroglyphs and such that these kind of features were documented of the sun. Um, there's strong suggestions that that's what these some of these petroglyph uh, um, drawings were, but um, we we don't have any kind of. Uh, we don't have any indication that people had attached that to magnetism until um, until Bigelow published his paper in 1890 about that. And um, I, I was reading this Alexander et al. 2005 paper on uh, kind of the history of solar, understanding the solar corona. So if you're a geek in terms of reading papers, that's a good, a good um, paper. You can find it online for free. Um, studying the sun's corona today. So one of our team members for this project is Jay Pasikoff. He's a famous eclipse chaser, as well as one of the very few people in the in the world or in the United States who study the sun by going to eclipses and doing scientific studies. Um, so these are some images that he took, uh, different images of images he took. So he took some images and then he put them on top of each other to get the differences between of the two um, images to pull out the features that he was seeing. And you can see that there was a, a coronal mass ejection, which is this large solar storms propagating through space um, that he caught. And you can see that it was, um, you know, within, so this first, oh no, this is just in New Zealand, this uh, picture on the right. Uh, so, so we know NASA, I think most of you know, NASA studies um, the, the sun. Here, I'm going to check my time here. Okay, good. Um, the sun's corona from space. And they do that, um, scientists from NASA do that by uh, putting um, cameras out on, cameras on, on satellites, and then they put these, um, they block out the, the bright photosphere of the sun with these disks. So here's a disk. And then the sun's photosphere would be this uh, little white circle, and then you can see the uh, the handle of the um, that uh, that's holding the disc in front of the camera um, here. And so what that does is it blocks out the light, and you can see this beautiful uh, corona, and then you see all these stars out in the in the background. And there are different cameras that have different field of view. So this is a closer in field of view, um, and then this was a the kind of this beautiful picture of. Uh, the NASA data merged with a an eclipse photograph here uh, that was very was analyzed very carefully with multiple images to pull out these features that you can see in the corona from the eclipse. And apparently, when you see it with your naked eye, it looks like this image, not like the um, kind of blurry uh, photograph images. And and by doing some really fancy te um, techniques, you can kind of cre recreate this. Uh, using camera data as well. So spacecraft like SOHO Stereo, they place this disc. Um, and so I wanted to show, because NASA has this great data, I'm going to kind of show how does, how does our project kind of um, fit with the data that NASA is bringing in and how does it complement it. So that's one reason I'm kind of uh, just showing you some of the, the NASA data. Uh, so this is a, a, a really zoomed up image of a feature on the sun. So if you look over here, I believe this um, is the, is the, uh, the horizon of the sun, essentially. So you can see this is just a, maybe mm, a 16th of the sun in different wavelengths, so different um, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. And you're mostly seeing here uh, UVE, uh, extreme ultraviolet light coming from emissions from iron uh, emissions. So um, what I wanted to show you is this flaring up. So the flares don't only happen in visible light, like what Carrington saw, but they happen in the ultraviolet light. So they um, and I'm, this is important for the mega movie a little bit later. Uh, so I just want to show you this movie. So here, you, this is um, basically a swath through these images, so, or, or over time. And what you're going to see is this big flare happen pretty soon in these images. So there it is, the flaring up of light. So see, you can see that it gets really, really bright in these different emissions. Um, from these different cameras that are, are watching the sun uh, from the satellite out in space. This uh, image right here, H, HMI is the magnetic 
imaging. Um, so we can image magnetic fields on the sun using this Zeeman splitting, which is a quantum effect that happens uh, when you have magnetic fields. And so the light splits, um, you can actually then detect it from remote sensing cameras. Uh, so, so we have these, these emissions coming from iron, and then you have uh, the magnetism here on the right. So I just wanted to show how dynamic this, our sun is, and you can kind of see here, these, the, these are, um, this is 11 minutes, 28 seconds. So this happens very quickly here. It's a very quick flare up. Okay, there we go. So dynamic. So the sun's chromosphere and corona, I've been talking a lot about the corona, which is this outer atmosphere of the sun. Um, and out there in the, in the corona, temperatures are very high. They're much higher than on the sun. So it's very different than like a um, candle where the, it gets, it actually, the sun actually gets hotter the farther you go from, away from it for a little while. <laughs> and then it gets cooler like a candle. But there's this funny region where energy um, is turning into temperature uh, and heating up the atmosphere of the sun even hotter than this photosphere. And the region that's really interesting, the, the region close in, that's kind of the um, boundary between that photosphere and the corona, we call the chromosphere. And that's really the important area for this um, eclipse work. So um, just to remind you that uh, this eclipse provides this just amazing opportunity, not only to discover more about the sun, but also to educate the public about science, about how scientific process happens, and um, about the, just the wonder of connecting with our universe. And it and, um, allows us to do some great outreach and just and connect with other people's, to people's wonder and have people experience things for themselves. So we're going to capitalize that on um, capitalize on that for our mega movie project. So this next section, this is my last little section, and I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about the mega movie project and how you can learn more and potentially participate. So um, I asked, uh, where will you be on August 21st? And it, um, I'm especially interested if you're going to be under the path of totality. Uh, because if so, then we hope you can participate in our project. And um, we'll have even more information happening uh, in, you know, in the coming months. Um, but what we would like to recommend you do is that you go to our website, and I'll show the slide again at the end, um, so you'll have the, uh, the URL here, but it's eclipsemega.movie. Um, or eclipsemegamovie.org, or .com, or .net. Anyways, you, all of those will work um, to get to our website. And you can sign up for the mailing list, and then you'll get updates from our project. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the science that we're hoping to uh, achieve. Um, we're trying to get some images of these uh, Bailey beads during the diamond ring time. During this time, since the, the moon has, of course, craters on it, and so as it is starting to uh, go to total to the to eclipse the sun completely, um, there's these few uh, what are called second and third contacts where we see what are known as Bailey's beads because uh, Mr. Bailey uh, noticed them and kind of documented them and talked about them in papers, scientific papers. And um, what you see is essentially the light of the sun is able to move through the craters of the moon, but not um, over the mountains of the sun, I mean of the moon. So you have this really interesting effect where you get a concentrated part of the sun's light peeking through the moon's craters. And that's interesting to us because what it does is essentially the moon becomes this nice little filter for scientists to study just a little tiny chunk of the sun um, and allow us uh, to get information about the brightness of that of that light, um, kind of the color of that light, the flux of it at that time. And then what we can do if we get enough of that data that's really good, then we can look at that information and compare it to NASA satellite um, images as well as some of the ground-based solar observatory images of that region of the sun. And um, essentially triangulate to, in order to understand uh, 
um, if, if that part of the sun has moved up, it can tell us more about the helioseismology of the sun. It can tell us more about the dynamics of the, um, of the, of the convection zone that's happening just below the photosphere. So there's some really interesting uh, physics that can be understood from this very simple measurement. And this, we're, we're really trying to get this, um, this measurement from the general public. So we kind of, as I said, we're, we're getting images from the general public as well as from trained volunteers. So this is kind of the science that we're hoping to um, learn a little bit more about just from general volunteers um, across the clip, clip, clips path that we won't be training. They'll be downloading an app that will kind of basically tell them what to do. <laughs> and then we'll do it for them uh, if they, if they, if, if you or they uh, listen to the, <laughs> to the app. Um, and it may be that we'll suggest on the website to, to um, get clip on cameras to their smartphones to support the scientific goals even more, uh, just so we, we get kind of a higher resolution um, image of that, of that Bailey bead. Um, but I think probably more interesting to those of you who are on the phone, uh, on the call or on this webinar today is these 1,500 volunteers. And for this, um, the science behind this, um, and there's kind of two pieces to this. One is the science behind it, but also um, this outreach movie that you could contribute to. So the, um, if we can get some really nice images of the, of the chromosphere, um, across this path, uh, then there's a possibility of us understanding the dynamics of that chromosphere better because um, only during total solar eclipses can we look at the, the uh, chromosphere in white light down to the photosphere. Um, so we have this great opportunity to really understand some emissions from the sun that we can't get. Um, we can get these great iron lines, but we can't get some of the other um, uh, bands, the other lines from um, from from the visible spectrum out in space because we have to block uh, so much of the sun to 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 see past to to get the dim corona um, so and there's and the reason is um, also because there's wobble there's enough wobbling in these spacecraft that you can't create a disk. If you, if you made a disk that perfectly covered the photosphere of the sun and the satellite, you can't keep the satellite uh, still enough, essentially, to, um, to have it continually cover the sun. So that's the reason why. And then we, what we hope to do is uh, create a movie with all these images. So this is a little graphic that I did um, where you can kind of see these different images that would be coming from the different regions. Uh, and so what I want to do is show you, so we're going to then patch all these images together um, and create a movie. And this is not what our movie is going to look like. But what I want to show you is a movie from NASA uh, that does show some really cool features of the sun and the chromosphere and the corona. But I'm going to show this movie to you for two reasons. One is to three reasons. One is because it's just super cool. Two is because um, you'll see that there's a region that NASA has a hard time um, kind of covering with their cameras and the eclipse, the total solar eclipse will get that area very nicely. And um, so there'll be some science we can do in that region. And then also um, it might just help you kind of imagine what the movie could look like that we're going to produce with our mega movie. Um, okay, so here's our, here's our uh, NASA movie. So you can see very dynamic um, features happening there off the, off the edge of the sun. And what you see, you have some, a, cr a coronal mass ejection being emitted, this big solar storm coming off the sun. In fact, there are a couple of them in there. And, um, and there's another one. So you can see uh, how far reaching these, uh, these features are. Now with the, with the eclipse, we could actually, it, I mean, we're, we're hitting solar minimum. Um, so the probability of having a coronal mass ejection is low, but um, it still could happen. And also there are all these really interesting small features that happen um, along the sun's surface, uh, right on the edge of the sun. So here you can see like 
there's the coronal mass ejection that's being emitted here, but then you also have these features, these prominences, which I know you all are very familiar with. Um, and those can change uh, over time, as I'm also sure you're very familiar with uh, being amateur astronomers. So um, we're really interested in how does that change over this hour and 40 minutes of this path of totality, and how does that then also um, end up either leading to some eruptions off the sun or, or to some other uh, dynamic features of the sun. So this is kind of hot off the press, um, so don't, you know, you can write it down, but just know that it could get modified a bit over the next month. Um, but as of today, this is what we're expecting people would need to do this um, to be part of the volunteer work. Uh, a camera, DSLR, digital single lens reflex camera, um, a telephoto zoom lens, but we don't want it to zoom too much because we really need to um, see the whole, uh, especially for the movie component, we want to see the entire um, corona, chromosphere and corona even maybe. So minimum focal length of 300 millimeters. Um, so for those of you who think more in terms of degrees of sky, which are probably most of you, uh, four and a half degrees of the sky. Um, and you can calculate, uh, ASP found this beautiful um, calculator online. Uh, if you want to uh, calculate the field of view for your particular DSLR and lenses. Um, and then a stable and level tripod, of course. And then what we really also want is GPS unit, um, both for the timing aspects, because if we're going to do any, um, well, both for the movie to patch the images together in the correct sequence, but also for the scientific uh, analysis that we want to do, um, both the GPS uh, to know where you are located and also um, the timing of your, when your images were taken to a very high um, uh, very high resolution. So those would be very useful to us. Our new website we launched uh, last month. So again, I talked to you about that a little bit and that's, we'll be um, updating that as we go. And um, so Google's Making and Science team is uh, the, the kind of small team within Google that's really um, uh, joined this project and uh, in many ways are helping lead the project. Um, Multiverse, my, this group I'm leading at UC Berkeley, um, our main, um, you know, we really love science and uh, science education and we, um, and the wonder of space and earth science. And we really also want to bring all, all Americans into that um, endeavor. And then we have all these wonderful partners, ASP, um, Oh, you can read all of these books. I'm not going to go through since I'm done. So here again is our mega movie, and we hope you participate. All right, I'm going to stop share, or do I should I stop sharing, Brian? Or um... yeah, I'd say stop sharing. Okay, and I'll take it from there. But stay on because it's great to see you. Yeah, that was fantastic, Laura. Thank you so much. There are so many um, questions in the chat. Um, one that's come up a couple of times is will this presentation be available and um it will be i am going to now try and share my screen and show you where that is um let's see. yeah just to, just to real right quick now. while you're doing that i just want to mention that i do I'll, i just need to um send the powerpoint presentation to the mega movie team one more time to just make sure that it can all be shared but but most of it will be shared if not all of it yes great so I think now you might be seeing my screen with any yep. look. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is it moving? Or it looks like it stopped sharing. Let's try this again. Okay. I see it. Okay, great. So this is, it will be on the main uh, Night Sky Network webinar page for this webinar. Um, you will, this is just a link to it right now. I'm not logged in. Um, but that is where you'll find this webinar. It probably any day now, in a couple of days. Um, we'll definitely have this uh, YouTube video up it probably by the end of the week and um, so you can share this with anyone you'd like um, all of the webinars that we do are um, are on YouTube and also on the Night Sky Network website so um, there are lots more questions and we are going to get to those if you have questions uh, go to the Q&A if you go to the bottom of your screen you should find a little um, uh, link that says Q and A, uh, and type them in there, and then we'll make sure to get them. Sometimes in chat, they get lost. So I just want to tell you, I am Vivian White. For those of you I don't know, 
Um, and I am I help run the Night Sky Network with Dave Prosper and Brian Cruz. And um, we're here at the ASP, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up about what you can expect from us around the eclipse. We are working really hard to get you things that you've said that you'll need. So I want to give you uh, first just the link to, if you are on the Night Sky Network website and you look up eclipse, um, you will find uh, all of these resources here. I'm just going to scroll down. Um, one thing that we have on there is a, a postcard. So these postcards have been super popular. I think you can see them if I put it up here. But you can also see I'm sharing it on my screen. It's a postcard that you punch a hole in the center of and it becomes a, a pinhole projector. Of course, you can do that with anything. But this one in particular has a lot of information about what you might want to use to see the eclipse. You can see here also on the um, screen that I'm sharing, it's editable. So you can put your club's information on there and then print these out. Um, if you printed it a, a professional postcard place, they often will be able to punch the holes in there for you. Um, and it's, it has recommendations on there of what size a three millimeter um, eighth, in, um, eighth of an inch hole uh, to do that. So that's one thing we're going to, um, we'll be sending you quite a few of those, but you can also print some yourself. Um, we are sending out Eclipse toolkits to all the clubs who have 10 or more events posted for 2017 on the Night Sky Network website. So those will be in there. Um, lots of other things will be in there. Um, also on that same page that I showed you, you'll be getting um, at least one of these um, Why Do Eclipses they Happen, also known as the Yardstick Eclipse, one of the perennial favorite Night Sky Network activities. This is a Marnie Berenson activity, I believe. Um, it comes with, we've created, a simple card to show, um, uh, use questioning strategies to ask people about eclipses and get them involved. And then we made little earths. We've been really busy making lots and lots of earths. Um, it's been really fun, but you'll get some of those in your eclipse box as well. Um, also, back to this, let me see if I can switch here. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and share a different screen quickly. Um, there is on the resource page that I was showing you, there is this presentation. Um, and it is how, um, let's see, let me get this up to the top. It's called an Eclipse to Remember. And it is designed for those of you who are not on the path of totality um, to give to your communities, to tell them about what's going on, um, to tell them what they can expect, what, what eclipses are. So the, the overview is there, what eclipses are about what to expect of a partial eclipse, um, what you might get to see in a total eclipse, uh, if they can make it there, and then lots and lots of resources for um, viewing it wherever you are. So um, definitely talks about how to project things safely, um, how to use filters, um, and what, you know, uh, what a solar eclipse might look like. It's got video and audio you can use or you don't have to use them. Um, it also has lots of links. Uh -oh. um, and then um, uh, along with some extensions at the end, we've got viewing resources for every place. Um, this bit.ly .ns, I mean, slash NSN Eclipse, this is where you can, it's the short link to finding all those resources I just showed you on the Night Sky Network. Um, but also this NASA um, link down here is going to be, have a lot of resources for you. Um, coming up about the eclipse. Let me just stop and share back to where I was. Let's see. I've got it. Okay. Um, so the NASA Night Sky Network, I'm jumping around a little bit here, I realize, but it's all kind of intertwined. Um, so this is the NASA Total Eclipse website, and on there you'll find in this toolkit um, downloadables. So these downloadables are fact sheets and posters and um, uh, information cards and brochures and things like that. Um, they have, NASA has very kindly printed out a lot, a lot, a lot of these for amateur astronomy clubs. So in your Eclipse packet, you'll be getting many copies of each of these. Um, uh, so you can print these yourselves, but also we just wanted to send them to you so you have them on hand. 
Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to cover. I think that that is really about it. Oh, we are um, one other thing that we are just getting ready to put together. Um, we have uh, these small uh, business cards that you can give out while you are at, while you're on the path of totality. We know that most of you are going to be traveling to the path of totality, so it doesn't help to give them information about your club back in your home community, but this will um, show them how to get on the Night Sky Network and find a club in their area to get people more engaged in astronomy clubs. That's, that's my job, <laughs> is to get more people engaged in astronomy clubs. Um, and I think this is, is just such a great teachable moment and a great opportunity to interest people in astronomy. And, and this is an easy way for them to follow up. So I think that that's all I have. I'm looking around my very piled desk at all the doodads that we're sending out. And I think that that is most of them. So I am going to, I'm happy to take any questions as well on the Q&A. Feel free to um, pop in there. I'm going to stop sharing now and see if Brian wants to hop back on. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah wrap this up. Yeah, I also wanted uh, to mention that uh, we are working on, uh, we haven't quite figured out what it is, but uh, one of the things that amateur astronomers like is to be recognized for uh, doing things, kind of like earning uh, Boy Scout merit badges or Girl Scout uh, badges and Girl Scouts. And I know that pins are terribly popular, and we haven't quite figured out what the uh, recognition item is going to be that everyone will get for uh, participating in this, but we're working on something so that when you're out there taking photos, that people will go to look and say, oh yeah, you know, he's doing the mega movie, so. I would also add one more thing I forgot. Yeah, please. What we didn't um, include in the Eclipse packages that we are sending to you are glasses. Because part of this mega movie will be distributing glasses to clubs, so stay tuned for how we're gonna do that. It's a very easy um, distribution method, so you'll be able to order um, glasses, and for those of you who are helping with the mega movie, um, as the 1,500 volunteers, you can, uh, you'll be able to send glasses to your club um, back at home. So uh, that'll be part, that's coming up again. The um, Night Sky Network Eclipse packages that we're sending out will probably be going out in mid-February. Um, sorry, there's been a bit of a delay on our end and nothing we could do about it. So we are, um, those are coming out fairly soon, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but, and the Eclipse glasses will be not long after that. So. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, we had a few questions. I want to go uh, kind of back to a couple of the ones that we, we answered here. I mean, uh, a lot of times, um, you know, people might not have noticed these in that they got answered by text. Um, but uh, Melvin asked, would it be better to make video or images or still images of the Krona for this? So, Laura? Yeah, so um, it's a great question. And it's a question that we continue to revisit on our team. Um, our answer continues to be that we're really looking for images. Um, primarily, there are two reasons. One is um, scientifically they're easier to handle uh, when we want to do analysis with them. And we are hoping that for, from the volunteers uh, that we'll do some flat fielding of your cameras so we can kind of detect the background um, counts on your CCD and your camera, and then we'll be able to uh, subtract that from the images themselves so we can get a really good um, we could basically turn the counts on your CCDs to to fluxes to a photon flux um, so that we can then do some real scientific analyses with it and so for the scientists we're really the, we're really looking for the images however for the and for the mega movie I think it'll be easier to piece together images um, from different sites but we also recognize how spectacular some of the movies are going to be and the video could be from some of your sites and so we are trying to figure out what do we do with those and do we collect them and do we um provide a place for you all to share them with one another um so we don't have a good so i guess the answer is images but we we see the value of the video and we haven't come up with how to deal with those that value yet in terms of um, managing it okay, so, so stay tuned so stay tuned yes. yeah. and if you have ideas that you'd like um, yeah to provide we we're happy to but there's a lot of wisdom in this group and a lot of wisdom and experience in this group yes I know um, 
And Stuart asks, and this is something that I know that uh, is, is, you know, clearly, you know, in, 19, in February 1979, I got clouded out with the total solar eclipse. It got really, really dark for several minutes, but uh, it was cloudy. And actually, it was snowing where I was. So, it's, uh, so Stuart asks, how do you plan on dealing with the uh, inevitable gaps in coverage? You know, and this might be, you know, uh, because the, the terrain is too rugged to get in there, there's no roads, or uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, inclement weather. Right. Um, so the question is just about avoiding weather or gaps in coverage. How do you deal oh, with the gaps in coverage? Right. You've got uh, uh, three hundred miles where there's no images or, or more. Right. Right. No. And I guess right. So so the question, the way I had answered it, was how are we going to try to get the best coverage possible, which is we're going to try to um, kind of get local folks involved across this path of totality, as well as provide incentives for folks to travel to where um, we see there are gaps. Um, however, in terms of the, there will be gaps because of what you just described, like there will be bad weather uh, across some of the path and, um, and, and we'll just deal with that in the way that we normally do with, uh, so for the movie, um, we'll be kind of hand picking, the images we'll be putting into the, the mega movie uh, so that we'll have something that's really very dynamic and interesting. As some of you had mentioned, I saw in the chat, um, the corona can change very slowly, especially <laughs> during solar minimum. So it might be a really boring movie, um, but hopefully it won't. And we, we have some ideas on how to make it for the outreach component to make it a little more interesting if there aren't some features um, that can be seen easily. But in terms of the gap, uh, we will, we'll just, we'll either extrapolate the data through that, um, uh, you know, from images across the 300, um, kilometer or miles, um, or we'll just, just acknowledge it's a gap in our data. Um, and in the movie, I mean, it's a good question. We have not determined how, like, what we'll do there. I, we're, some of our team members really want it to be time-wise very accurate. And so in that case, it would just be blank. And uh, if we couldn't get coverage, you know, across the width either, as well as the length, um, then I guess it would be blank if we were just keeping it very time accurate. Uh, or we might turn it, if we might make it a little more um, artistic or put in a, a kind of a um, blank, place that says, you know, skipped <laughs> a data gap. <laughs> so that we're still, again, um, trying to sort through that. And again, we would love um, if anyone wants. I think we'll, you know, our volunteers, which I imagine some of you will be, hopefully, uh, will will be, become part of our team. And so um, you will get to uh, provide input into oh. So Barry asks uh, an interesting question, and I'm going to kind of expand on on this a little bit because this is one of the things that we've been kind of debating in the uh, equipment group and what equipment is going to be, you know, appropriate. And he asks about using a, uh, a hydrogen alpha scope with a high speed black and white camera to generate some things. But I want to expand that and think about that if um, someone is intending on taking photos through a telescope that has uh, adequate field of view, would that be acceptable as well as the DSLR images? Yes, yes, absolutely. And I think it's really a matter of the field of view um, because what we're going to have to do, I mean, for the movie, what we'll have to do is resize some of the images so that we, we get, you know, so we have the right size of the sun, um, moon, uh, on the image. Um, and so really any system that can give kind of a good, a good image will, will work. Um, there's something else I wanted to say about that. Oh, the H, right, H alpha. Um, so yeah, we've had some really cool questions about that before. And I, we definitely, from a scientific perspective, absolutely would love to collect that data. Um, how we'll tag it and if we're gonna like I know some of you actually do fits files and such which would be marvelous um, <laughs> and so uh, but we haven't kind of figured out how we'll tag it in terms of um, different filters but I know there are some gonna be some amazing filtered images coming in um, and we definitely would love that and in fact that would even make 
now that I'm thinking about it, just right now, that could make the movie interesting as well to kind of have a multi filtered movie yeah. over time. So, Peter asks an uh, interesting question that this is, um, you know, this might be a, a solution to our gap problem. He says, uh, uh, might NASA deploy, and I know that the, your, or Google in this case, uh, uh, deploy some aircraft to fly above the weather to cover some of those weather gaps <laughs> or, or maybe terrain gaps? Right. No, it's a really good question. In fact, um, the National Science Foundation, because I don't know how much of you know about the National Science Foundation, but they fund a lot of the plane, airplane work um, and ground-based work. And so um, they do have a plane, they have funded an airplane to fly along the path of totality. And um, one of the co- principal investigators on that project is also a mega movie uh, project team member. So we have access to some of that data. Also NASA, so yep, um, has funded some outreach groups to launch balloons. And we've talked to the folks um, who are running the balloon program and trying to figure out how to get good data from them. Uh, the problem with that is that they're probably going to be kind of wobbly uh, the pointing issues might be a little more difficult, but we're in conversations with them as well. So um, that would be another gap, uh, potential way to cover the gaps. That's right. Very nice. So Harry notes uh, that there's also the, the Citizen Kate project, which is working on uh, some uh, coverage. He mentions video, and I know that they're also doing some uh, um, other still imagery, and, and it's a it's a different project. Is there any synergy that's going on between this project and Citizen Kate? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, Matt got his idea from hearing one of our uh, mega movie folks present at a conference, and he was like, "Oh, that's a great idea." But what if I did something um, even more kind of constrained in terms of um, more of a, a a scientific experiment using all the same equipment across the path. So, so what's really nice about his project is it complements ours in that he'll have calibrated data um, from from identical systems, 60 of them across the path. And so he'll have this beautiful data set that isn't as well, doesn't have the coverage that our project has, but it has, um, it has some other benefits to it. And so I think having the two data sets is really, I mean, it, it makes for a good case for some really cool science that can be done. Okay. Um, Greg asks here, and I'm not quite sure what the whole question is. He says that he has a Sony um, camcorder that he's going to be using, and it gives eight MP stills from the video. And, and, uh, uh, I'm guessing that the question is, is, would those be something that would be useful for uh, to submit as individual images towards the movie? Yeah, no, I think, I mean, it's so amazing the technology that's available now. That, I mean, that's one reason this is a once, one of its kind projects is simply the technology that exists today. Um, yes, that sounds like a lovely camera. And if, if you don't want it when you're done, um, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that sounds great. Yeah, we would love to get images from there. And then uh, Robert asked a question, and I know that this is something that uh, becomes an issue for a, a lot of astrophotography in general. Um, what kind of method uh, that, you're gonna, that we're going to need for flat fielding in the camera or whether it's even necessary in this instance? Yeah, we will. From the volunteers, we do have a flat fielding approach that we're going to take. And um, one of our science team members wrote up what that procedure is going to look like. And I don't have it memorized. But we um, have a procedure for that. And then the volunteers will get trained on it so that um, we have some good consistency across. Okay. I to kind of make a note on that too, just so everybody knows, we will be, um, once the 1500 volunteers are selected to do the real DSLR images, um, we'll be offering trainings and those will be available online and you'll be able to test out your equipment to see if it, um, see if you're able to take these images. So um, there will be lots more information coming on that. Yeah. Uh, so I suspect that uh, most of uh, the photographers who are going to be doing this have greater expertise at this than, than I do and, and most of us on the team. Um, but I think that what the idea of the, the training is going to be not that, that you know, I, 
when it comes to doing some of this photography, there's very little that I can teach people. Um, but I think the, the mainly it's getting some consistency so that we're getting consistent images from coast to coast so that we get useful images and that we know uh, how we want things time stamped and how we want things GPS stamped and, and things like that. So that's going to be one of the big uh, foci of the, uh, um, of the trainings that we do. Yeah, no, that's a really good point, Brian. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I really think we can we can capitalize on a lot. I mean, this project, I like to talk about this project being by the people for the people, um, because there's so much expertise out there, and especially in this community that even our team doesn't have. So we're really, and we have like one or two people who kind of <laughs> provide some input, but if we put all the brains on this call together, it's going to, it's vast. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I, I think that we do, you know, sometimes we, we get groups together and it's more like pooling our ignorance than anything else. I think that this is the exact opposite. We have way more information and expertise than what we really need. But, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, trying to figure out, you know, just exactly what we need to uh, produce something really, really cool. Yeah. So... Well, thank you very much, Laura and, and Vivian. And so we've uh, run out of questions here, and we're uh, about at the top of the hour. And uh, and uh, I think it's time for a, a book raffle. And so let me refresh my memory about the, some of the closing things. And so uh, to remind you that this webinar, uh, along with all the others, will be posted on our YouTube uh, channel. And also you can find, uh, eventually, when we get the slides from Laura, and uh, uh, Vivian's for sure will be there, and a link to the YouTube page, the video on the YouTube page, will be on the Outreach Resources page uh, for this webinar on the NSN website.